Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to start the presentation of Sputniko. Sputniko, that's a strange name. I think you are thinking it's a strange name. Well, actually, it's not my real name. It is not Sputniko. It is actually about 10 years ago when I was doing the music club in London, Sputnik, that is the Russian satellite. And you look like Russian, so why don't you just, uh, the, you are actually Sputnik, but the Ko is a Japanese girl's name to put together, and that was a new name. And I didn't think that I would be the MIT professor uh, with this name, but I'm at the design uh, fiction group. It, since 2013, we've established that at the MIT Media Lab, and I am an artist, so I'm using art and design to do a lot of projects. And this design uh, fiction uh, uh, art lab, what I'm doing, the first thing that I'd like to talk about, that first concept, is that a speculative design, this terminology. Anthony Dunn and Fiona Raby, those two people at the uh, Royal College of uh, London professors have proposed this term, speculative design. When you hear the word design, especially the general people among you, what do you think? Well, design. There's something beautiful to be designed or something use, very easy to use, I mean that the cell phone to be designed or easy to hold design out the bottle to be designed. Design is something to solve certain problems. A lot of people think design in that manner. D design is something to solve issues or problems. But speculative design is not to solve problems, but design is something to show you or to actually to raise issues and propose the problems to stir discussions and ideas. That is the concept of speculative design. And well, why? But there are already a lot of problems. Why designers have to come up with new, new problems? People may think that way, but actually we like to think. Let's make this world a better place. I think you've heard of that phrase many, many times, but better future. It's not easy to do it because the better future, it's not just one. My better future may not be the same as your better future or for Americans, for Japanese, for Islam fundamentalists or Catholics or to same uh, for the uh, homosexuals or Wall Street or the Occupy Wall Street demonstrators. For all those people, the same, uh, it may not be the same. They are completely different, better future, but with the design power, this kind of future is possible. What do you think? What do you think about this kind of future? The better future or good future for me is what? You, we really have to think about it and come up with the idea, come up with the solution. In that sense, speculative design is very important. So this. Uh, concept should be shown in an easier to understand manner. Hasegawa Ai, or Ai Hasegawa, is actually doing a, a project called Impossible Baby. Uh, right now, the same sex marriage has been and is discussed worldwide, especially in the United States. Very recently, finally, in the United States, the same sex marriage is legalized, finally. It's a hot topic, but still. When you think about same sex, people can get married, can get married. Here in Japan, it cannot be done. But even if they can get married ordinarily, and they won't be able to have a baby and have a family. It only can be done between man and woman. That's what you would think. Woman to woman or man to man cannot have a baby, cannot have a child. That is the common sense probably, but the biotechnology, especially IPS cell technology, uh, the research and results uh, are there. And this is what uh, in July in Kyoto University, Professor Saito has made a presentation. And then last year, uh, between the Cambridge University and Weizmann, the Science Institute have put together, have published a paper uh, about this, that is the uh, 
man's cell is, can be changed, or somatic cell can be changed to iPS cell. That can be this heart cell, or can be the neural cell, that can be made into various types of cells. This, so this uh, the skin cell can be made into iPS cell. And then, so that, using that technology, uh, a woman's cell can be made into a sperm, or a man's cell can be made into uh, the egg cell. So premodal germ cell is that is before the sperm, meaning that they were successful to uh, make a primordial germ cell from iPS cell that was uh, published from the Cambridge University and the Weizmann Institute. So, so you can get the sperm or you can make a, an egg cell and you can get it, get them fertilized. And, uh, and uh, the man's sperm uh, can be uh, matched with the man's, uh, originally man's cell, egg uh, cell, to get a baby. And Jack Hunter, uh, the researcher at the Weizmann Institute, saying that in two years' time, at the earliest, the same-sex couple can have a baby. Sunday Times has written about it. So here it is. Technologically, the same-sex couple can Suppose, can be able to make a baby, will it be allowed for humans? Will the society accept it? Can the society allow or accept it? That is the issue that we have to think about now. So, but this issue, we're looking at it from a different perspective, look at the uh, treatment for having babies, so those fertilization, infertility treatment. Well medical technology being used to have a baby. But when you think about those uh, same-sex couple who are legally now can get married, and why can't we make them the subject of fertility treatment to have a baby? And that question can be asked, and then nobody is able to come up with an answer. We, know, we don't know which is the right answer or which is not the right answer. So in our uh, lab, what we are doing from the art point of view to come up to stir this kind of discussion, that is a project. Asako Makimura and Morika, uh, they are same-sex uh, couple uh, married in France with their cooperation. 23 and me that is the, using the uh, genomic data analysis, uh, analytic service and we analyze the data genetic data and we put together a program the simple program suppose they make a child between them what kind of a gene that they will carry we've done it twice meaning that we come up with two daughters it is not the issue of designer baby it's uh, we are not talking about we just enter the it, program it, uh, put the genes together of those two people and come up with a baby and we've done the simulation. And those, uh, this couple, so the daughter's genetic information, using that information, what kind of hair, is it a straight hair, is it curly, or is it a happy nature uh, person or not? A lot of information comes up from the gene genetic information. We cannot do 100% simulation, but we've done as much as possible, visually and uh, characteristically. And then we've come up with those two daughters. They are the ones. Computer graphic uh, specialists work together with us. On the right-hand side is PowerCo's uh, data, the genetic data of PowerCo. And and the left hand side, Mameko. In comparison to Mameko, Pawako has a curly hair, and her uh, skin is a bit uh, fairer. And they are uh, the sisters, but they have different genetic data, so we've done the simulation from that point of view. And suppose, suppose, suppose those people are a family, and what kind of, say, family life that we can see? We've done the rendering. IBF, for example, IBF. That is the in vitro fertilization. In the beginning, the people were saying that that is the, the vitro or that the test to baby, but the, out of uh, 27, one baby is uh, born as I 
VF baby in Japan. But even if uh, the, this baby is IVF baby, this baby can grow into an uh, ordinary person and can fall in, fall in love and have a family. So, for example, this Mameko, when she eats coriander, she uh, tastes soap. So she has that kind of gene. And Pawako, she is now eating asparagus. But when she eats asparagus, the, the day, the following day, her urine smells like asparagus. So that is a gene that she has. That's, that's being shown. Based upon their gene information, we are putting together, we are rendering together a lot of family photos. And this project, this uh, making process uh, with, the, with the same uh, sex couple, the corporation, we put together the album uh, of the family. Uh, we've done that kind of project together with NHK. We put together this documentary into 30 minutes documentary. And it will be shown on October 22nd, uh, Thursday, at uh, 10 minutes after midnight. So it is the title, title, Aeru Hasu no Nakata, Watashi no Kodomo, that is a child I couldn't have uh, been able to meet. So there's the issue of ethics, so that you can ask, or you can uh, look into this issue. That can be really a history-changing uh, issue, uh, going back to the genesis of Adam and Eve. But this couple, uh, in a conflict that they are uh, feeding, uh, in the last uh, week, Heartnet TV has shown this documentary twice already. We've done a tremendous uh, reaction on internet. We've received so many comments. Can you re read that? It's a together. This is a Twitter uh, combining uh, site. Together.com, L I 8828876. So, this is where you will see the reactions there on this uh, document, documentary program. And we are so impressed. And of course, the people, uh, pros and cons that we heard, and that will make the discussion interesting. And we are putting together a response, and in next spring, here at the Modi Museum, there's a Roppongi Crossing, uh, the exhibition of modern art. There, we'd like to make an exhibition there, and then we'd like to uh, interact with the audience there, and then we like to look into the future of the fu family, future of uh, our life and the sex and gender. And it. so please take a look at this documentary on Thursday. So metabolismic bio uh, project was being explained. Uh, that will be followed with a new one. New project. So, can I engineer silkworms to spin love? This is the uh, preliminary title. Another project. You heard about the red thread. If you are Japanese, you know about the red thread, which uh, actually connects you with a person of your destiny. That person that you are going to be uh, connect. Uh, to be uh, to get married, or you are actually connected with a red thread since you were born. So that is the story that we hear uh, in Japan and East Asia. So IPS and, and gene recombination technology advancement that we've seen in recent years, people say it may be a challenge to God, or maybe you are doing uh, the. Uh, the things that is, we are not actually uh, this uh, uh, blasphemy against God. This is the Times uh, cover in 2006. It says God versus science. But uh, a lot of discussions are taking place. But rather than challenging God, why don't we try to come up with uh, using the biotechnology something creature which can uh, appear in mythology. So that is the project that we've been doing. We are trying to do 
And we thought we need a lot of advisors coming up with the mythology, coming up with creatures of God, uh, with bio. Of course, I do go to shrines. I went to Kanda Myojin, and I asked uh, the uh, priest there, uh, talked about this kind of biological uh, project that I was thinking, and I consulted with him, and then he was very much cooperative, and he has given me a lot of advisors. And then from that kind of discussion, the concept came up. That is the red thread of fate. And then the silk worm, which spins that red thread. So the humans? Uh, making some creature from mythology. It's not something that started recently. Do you know Ranchu, the goldfish? This was uh, made during the Edo period. Uh, so they were breeding, the amateurs were breeding, and that Ranchu looks like a dragon uh, from uh, above. And uh, so it looked like a, a creature from a mythology. And the amateurs were creating th this through breeding in the Edo period in Japan. And that the pace has now accelerated in the modern era. Now, this is a genetically uh, modified silkworm. Uh, in Tsukuba, there is the National Institute of Agrobiological Sciences. They developed this technology. And so you take the genes uh, of uh, a jellyfish uh, and coral, uh, which emits light. You uh, insert that into the silkworm. And then you can uh, make silk uh, that uh, is light emitting. Uh, and uh, so they use the silkworm like a living 3D printer. So you print by inserting ink or other materials. Instead of doing that, you insert uh, genes and you print various different types of silk. For example, uh, the uh, uh, by uh, injecting uh, spider uh, gene, you can have a very uh, strong uh, silk uh, because uh, it has the strengths of the uh, uh, spider web, or you can make silk that's very suitable uh, for uh, the uh, uh, medical application and uh, for suture. And uh, so I was quite impressed. I went to the National Institute and uh, met with them. And I said, I want to make various different types of silk, and uh, would you join me for a brainstorming session? And we started talking, and this is how the gene uh, is inserted by needle uh, into uh, the uh, egg cell. You can see the uh, eyes uh, shining bright. So if uh, the uh, eyes are bright, then uh, you know that uh, the genetic recombination was uh, uh, successful. This is where you have the RFP, so it's like a cyborg uh, movie, but this is how the recombination is done. And what I said was that uh, we should uh, insert uh, a gene that makes oxytocin. How many of you know oxytocin? Not so many yet. Uh, oxytocin is called the love uh, hormone. Uh, and uh, empathy uh, hormone. And so between a couple, when you have a hug or have a body touch, when you have that kind of a connection, uh, you, you uh, excrete this oxytocin inside the body. It's a very interesting substance. In 2012 at the Bonn University, Dr. Len Harman uh, did this research and uh, a if you uh, inject oxytocin to a married man, uh, love for his wife becomes so strong that uh, he no longer approaches other attractive uh, women. So it uh, uh, prevents the cheating of men. So that's uh, been reported. And not just in love relationships, but in a business uh, setting, uh, if uh, uh, you take uh, oxytocin, uh, the uh, sense of uh, uh, trust uh, is enhanced, and so the possibility of uh, success of transaction uh, rises. Maybe in this uh, office, if you have oxytocin, you can generate more new business. So uh, it's uh, this uh, a very interesting substance with those kinds of effects. So uh, you insert that gene uh, into the silkworm so that the uh, silkworm can spin uh, silk that uh, 
includes oxytocin, and then you make a dress out of that, and then you would have the uh, uh, killer dress. Uh, and that's what I came up with, and I proposed that to the uh, researchers at the uh, National Institute of Agrobiological Sciences, and they were quite surprised. But they said, actually, it can be done. And it's not just a gene uh, that uh, produces oxytocin. You can also introduce RFP, uh, which makes uh, it uh, light up in red. So then you will have a silkworm uh, that can uh, spin the uh, red uh, thread uh, of fate. And uh, I thought this was a fairy tale. And uh, I came from MIT, and I, and I had this strange name. They probably uh, thought I'm from uh, I'm some fictitious character, but uh, it, it's, this is real. And uh, genetic modification is being done, and you see on the left-hand side uh, the silkworm with the oxytocin gene. And uh, so they sent me the photograph in August, and uh, also has uh, and so the breeding with uh, the uh, a silkworm uh, with the uh, uh, the uh, red color, uh, we can uh, generate a silkworm by December, uh, one that will spin uh, the red uh, thread of love. So, uh, Sputniko, we, when I make a piece of work, uh, I don't want just to use technology. I think that uh, a story is uh, very important. What kind of people uses this kind of uh, technology? What kind of world do they generate? I uh, always create that kind of a story, and I uh, add music to it. I make a uh, music video and place it on YouTube uh, in preparing my work. And in this project, uh, I worked with Tamaki-chan. Uh, well, actually, she's the main character in this uh, video. Uh, she's a, a science-minded woman. She, there's this uh, uh, older student that she's in love with, uh, but uh, uh, the, the guy doesn't notice. And uh, she wants to know. Well, she thinks, she wishes that there was this uh, uh, red string of uh, fate. And if there is not that red string, she's going to make it herself. And then she's going to make that uh, killer uh, dress and uh, scarf. Uh, so that is the story that I'm uh, producing a, a video and music for. And uh, uh, at the Seto Uchi Art Festival next year, this is uh, going to be a permanent installation. So on Keshima Island, there is this old uh, Japanese house that's going to be refurbished, and uh, it's going to be remodeled into a laboratory for that the girl. Uh, and there the girl is going to uh, invent this uh, red string of fate, and then she's going to uh, try to capture uh, 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 that boy. And so I was telling this uh, to uh, the uh, priests at the shrine, and uh, they were saying, uh, uh, why don't uh, uh, we create uh, uh, a charm uh, based on that, and uh, that may be a good idea. And uh, the, the priest there uh, says, uh, why don't we work together to make a charm using that uh, red string of fate? So that kind of uh, 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 fusion is now emerging between us. So this is uh, a work in progress. So this is, uh, uh, we worked with Gucci to uh, uh, do an exhibit in April of uh, uh, this uh, uh, light emitting uh, silk. So maybe this will be the dress for the girl. Maybe uh, it's too radical, and maybe uh, she won't be successful in attracting the boy. But uh, she will make a dress like so. And you look through this filter, and then uh, you can uh, see the light from the gene. This is the GFP. And what's shining in red is the RFP. I'm sorry, I'm going over time. And uh, so this uh, is the image visual uh, of the uh, wild scientific girl. And uh, uh, we're working with the Kyoto Nishijin uh, Ori people. And this is the silk. So let's move on. 
Sorry, I, I, I went over time. So new metabolism. What is new metabolism? We're going to talk in the, uh, the uh, discussion, panel discussion. There's still 30 minutes left. So what is a new metabolism? I gave it a thought. And uh, uh, biotechnology, that is advancing. And the bio has become sort of a buzzword. And that is going to create uh, a lot of change. And I can understand the importance of uh, biotechnology. But one thing we need to be careful is that the last time where we had that metabolism movement, there were many interesting proposals. And uh, sometimes they were too symbolic and they uh, became too much of an uh, uh, art monument. So you build a big building that will uh, have metabolism. But uh, that, did it really have metabolism or not? It just became a symbolic uh, art uh, uh, fixture. And uh, now biotechnology has become a uh, buzzword. But uh, if it just becomes a symbolic uh, term, if we just apply that uh, to the uh, architecture, then I think that uh, we'll just end up with a symbolic monument again. And I go to the Shinjuku uh, Golden Street uh, to, to get a drink. And uh, there, this is like a skeleton uh, infill uh, origin, so because there's always uh, uh, this change uh, in the bars, new ones come in, and the people talk, and the community is formed. And the buildings themselves, uh, it's moldy, and there are grass growing. And uh, we are bioorganisms, too. So we're living and we're, we, we're engaged in biocommunications through Facebook. So people's uh, lives, uh, towns, cities, we really have to look at that. And we have to look at, at the metabolism that uh, arises uh, from people's real needs. And that's what I think about the new metabolism. Thank you very much.